So we all know Adobe is no stranger to AI research and development. In fact, they continually strive to stay ahead of the competition when it comes to producing rich, stable, AI-powered and user-friendly tools. And like we mentioned in previous videos, before AI became a buzzword, Adobe had already started building and showcasing some interesting AI tools. And with new projects coming to Adobe, via Adobe's powerful AI engine Adobe Sensei, more and more AI tools are making their ways to Adobe products. And in fact, there is a brand new one that is happening to Photoshop and this is having a wonderful implementation of Adobe's Firefly image generation feature, which in my opinion, will slowly replace the content aware feature that exists in Photoshop. This is definitely a powerful and useful tool as it is, and it just simply helps you do the most in Photoshop, like generating objects, backgrounds, extending images, removing unwanted objects, and more. And for those who like to try this out, you can simply download Adobe's Creative Cloud app and download the Photoshop beta. The idea for this beta is to allow you to experience the future of Photoshop with generative fields. And this, in its sense, would literally help you define and create new images and manipulate these in various ways by simply using prompts. And to actually get this going is as easy as this. So, with Photoshop simply open right here, which is the beta, you can load in an image. Images that we have here are downloaded off Unsplash.com, which is a website where you can find free high-resolution images. Now, with the image that we have here, we can start prompting directly here in Photoshop. First off, you would notice that we have the select subject. If we do have a subject, this automatically selects it, and we have the remove background for background removal. If you take a look right here, you would also notice that we have the property bar. I'm just going to dot this right over to this point so that we can actually see what we're doing at certain times. So the first thing which we're going to do is select a certain area and we can start generating prompts from here. I'm going to click on generate field and type a simple prompt, which is a man on a canoe. Actually, to even better put this, I will say a man on a wooden canoe to see what we're going to get. And once you're done, you can hit the generate button and automatically the AI actually gets to work. Now, once this is done, this provides you with three images. We can toggle through this by clicking on next and next to see what we have. Additionally, you can find the variations from here. And if you'd like to generate more, you can click on the generate button one more time. And this will generate three additional ones, which you can now toggle through depending on what you're trying to get. Now with this done, you can see that this does not only create the image, but at the same time, you also understand the fact that this is water and it creates the reflection as well. If you'd like to add multiple things on your scene, of course you can, as this wouldn't cost a thing to do. And just like every other thing, in Photoshop, once you create any image, automatically this creates layers for you. So you can turn off these layers at any point in time, and you can even go over to the masking and choose to subtract from the mask. So if I click on that and start painting, we can subtract from this mask, and we can click on add to mask to even add more to it. You can hide the mask if you want. If you like to play with certain parameters like the density and the feathering, you can also do that. Now, regardless of this, one thing you probably might have noticed is all of the selections that we've been doing is not directly on the background object. So this simply means that the generative AI actually looks at all of the images underneath and uses that to do its calculation. Now with this done, if we tap C on the keyboard and choose to expand this image by holding down Alt on the keyboard and stretching this all the way out, once we press the Enter key, we can also choose to select these parts. So you can select one of these and then you can hold down Shift and select the other part as well. You can choose to modify the selection, invert the selection, transform the selection, mask this, and even add some adjustment layers if this is what you want. Now with this done, what we're going to do next is just simply click on generate fill. And instead of entering a prompt, if we hit on the word generate, this will automatically calculate this particular image and produce some very interesting finishing that actually compensates every other part of this image. So this in itself is going to get rid of the idea of working with the content aware field because who would really need content aware field once you have this going? And of course, lots of people may have not actually tried this, but at the same time, you can choose to do some very interesting manipulations by playing with the sky replacement feature, which is also an AI driven feature that exists for Photoshop. And in this image, we're going to take a look at another interesting example with what you can do with the generative AI that is now available in Photoshop. So with the image here, we can click on select subject and this will automatically analyze the image and select all of the characters that we have. But in this case, what we would like to do is just simply select these ones. So I'm going to press M on the keyboard, click all the way from here and select just these ones. Now with that there, I can click on generative view and without typing anything, I can click on the word generate 
and this would proceed to take a look at the image and compensate for all of this by removing the characters and filling out all of the blank spots. So at this point, we still have three different variations to choose from and you can see how brilliant this does it. And if we like to change the fabric or the clothing of a character, of course we can. So once I have this object selected, I can choose to change what this character is putting on. Actually, we can even make it a bit more interesting by going all the way here and let's go ahead and make that selection all the way like so and go all the way right about the point like that. So this is definitely going to be looking interesting once we're done because what we like to do is give our character a little bit of a dress. And at this point, you can see what we have and you can also see that these also tries to approximate and create legs. So we can actually go over and take a look at other options. And I kind of think that this actually works. So we can proceed to even do more stuff. At this point, we're going to add a baseball hat. We actually don't like the way these characters are positioned because we would like them to be in the center. So we're going to expand and actually get some more parts. And for the office label, we're also going to zoom in and use a prompt to create a small office label. This might not fit, but this is where your skill as an artist comes in. Something else which is also very interesting to do is we can also extend various parts of this particular image. So you can see how we went all the way from this to something like this. This can only be possible with such speed and accuracy only with AI. And to see that we now have this in Photoshop is just super interesting. One thing which I probably didn't mention earlier is once you go back to any of the layers that you used to generate anything before, you can actually switch through all of the options that are available. So at any point in time, you feel like you're supposed to select a particular one and you sort of missed it, you can always go back and toggle through those. So at this point, you can toggle through for the top and you can toggle through to get another desired result. So depending on what you're trying to make, you have options for that. It's also worth mentioning that the size of your masking informs the AI on the size of the object it's going to produce. A bigger size gives bigger stuff, smaller size gives smaller ones. And depending on the unit of skill that you're working with and the measurement that you provide, that is what the AI would use to create all of what it needs to do. And in this scene, you can also see that we're actually playing with some desert stuff. One thing which you also notice is within this scene, once we create anything, it respects the direction of the light. Unlike several AI tools that actually doesn't care, this actually takes into account the area the light is coming from and also compensates for that to produce a much more realistic and nicer looking image. And this also works across various things like puddles, mirrors and so much more. So this is it. One of the best AI tools to make it to Photoshop is now here and it is totally available for anyone who would like to catch up with this to get it via the Creative Cloud. This is a peek into the future of Photoshop with generative feel and it looks super impressive. And for anyone who would like to try this or read more about it, I'm going to put links to this in the description where you can proceed to find them and start doing the most with it. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you like something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And I'd like to see you guys in the next one. Peace.